Hi students, welcome to this first video in our tutorial series for the first game in 2D for Godot. Um, we are using a set of instructions available from the Learn or the Education section of the Godot website and it's called Your First Game and the actual game we're making is this one underneath called Dodge the Creeps. Now it's a fully fledged game, it has everything from a start menu through the initial uh, gameplay, it has a scoring system, an ending sequence, uh, so it has all the main sequences that we need to call it a fully fledged game. Um, this documentation, as I said, is available from the Godot website. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a second screen, especially maybe at home, uh, it would be a good idea to plug that in when you're working on your game so you can have your instructions maybe on one screen and the full game on the other so you've got plenty of space to work. Otherwise, uh, you may just need to flip between them, the same as you're probably going to have to do here at school. I'm lucky enough in this recording to have enough screen space that I can have the video, sorry, the instructions on my right hand side and you'll see the game development area on the left. So hopefully as we go through this, you'll be able to see both quite clearly. Uh, a few other pieces of advice before we get into this. Um, firstly, it is very, very important that you follow the instructions completely, including reading through every single part of it. There are lots of little things that you'll come across that are uh, maybe not obvious to start with, but are going to be useful and important as things go through. So trying to skim through it uh, is not really the best way. Having said that, that's what I'm going to do here in the video, just because of uh, timing. I don't want to sit here and read this to you word for word, but it is important that you are reading. The second advice I'll give you is to follow the instructions exactly, and that includes things like the naming of things in your code. So for example, if you are naming an object um, and use a capital letter, and they don't in the tutorial or vice versa, then they will be considered different. They'll be different objects. So you'd have some errors that are going to be a bit difficult to track down when you're new and inexperienced. Uh, so please try and follow exactly the instructions, especially the code that they give you in the tutorial. Okay, let's get started. Um, the first section really just describes the game and what we're going to be trying to learn. So again, I certainly won't read this to you. But one thing that is important is that you need to download the Dodge the Creeps assets. Now they come down as a zip file. Uh, depending whether you're using a Mac or Windows, things can work a little bit differently. But essentially you need to extract out those files. And I've got just on my other screen here, I've got them extracted out. Here they are. And if I look inside that again, you'll see there's an art and a fonts folder. Okay, so I'm just going to put those to the side again and bring them back in just a moment. So download those if you haven't already. Let's move to the next screen. So next screen we start setting up our project. So here we are creating the actual project. So I'm going to go to the new project. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, Dodge the creep sounds good. Okay, and I need to give it a path. So I strongly suggest in my school that these are saved uh, normally on OneDrive, but in fact, I often find issues with OneDrive synchronization in Godot. Um, so I strongly suggest in this case, you don't use uh, OneDrive and that you put your folder on somewhere that makes more sense on your actual device. It does mean you be, need to be a bit more careful with file management, that you look after your files, that you back them up and so forth, um, which we often at my school leave that to uh, OneDrive to actually do that for us. But yeah, as I said, synchronization can be an issue. And I've found students who seem to have lost work because their OneDrive didn't fully synchronize and that's caused a problem. So for me, I actually have a folder. So if I go to my C drive, I actually have a Godot. Oops, didn't do that very well, did I? Uh, I have a Godot folder. I have a projects folder and I did have a Dodge the Creek. So I'm just going to delete that one. We don't need that one for the moment. Can we delete it? Yes, we can. Don't know why it's not deleting. Let's just go back and see if maybe it just didn't refresh. No. Okay, well, I might just have to give it a second name. That's okay. But we'll select the folder. Um, I will call this 2024 then just to be safe because I must have one from a previous year doing this. So what we can see here, it's saying the folder path is not empty, um, but it's okay. It's just a warning because when we create folder with this name, you'll see now it has made a new folder using the name that we chose and it's saying everything's good. So we're able to continue with that. The other thing is we will continue using compatibility for our games. Um, I don't think it talks about that here. No, it doesn't. Um, if you use forward plus, it will be fine. If you use mobile, we could run into some small issues with this tutorial. So I suggest just sticking with compatibility. 
And finally, we're not worried about version control at the moment. If you know how to use Git and you want to try and do that, feel free. Or one of the other options that it gives you, actually, we can just say none. That's probably even better. We'll just say none to make sure that we don't hit any problems later. Let's go create and edit. And unfortunately, that on my computer opens on a different screen. So I'm just going to bring it back uh, onto the screen that's been recorded here. Let's see if we can bring that in here. There we go. And resize it to fit that space that I have. Lovely. So now we have the default screen set up. And if we scroll down, we're now at the point where it wants us to bring in those assets. So the easiest way to bring in those assets, um, actually, I think they do that a little bit later. Let's check. Yeah, they'll do that later. So let's do the in the right order. So we've got the assets. We know we've got them. Awesome. We're going to go into the project settings and set a few values. So project menu up the very top, project settings, and we're looking for the display window so display and window and we can see here that we are changing the viewport so that's the part of the screen that you'd actually see so it's the size of your screen essentially and because it's going to be a vertical um, game we're changing it so the width is actually a lot narrower than the height so we're going to change this to 480 and 720 so we're just following exactly the instructions there then if we go down a little bit further, it also says we want to change some stretch value. So scroll down in the same area, it's still in display window. Scroll down until we see stretch. And we want the mode to be canvas items and aspect to be keep. So again, you may not understand what these mean yet. They'll come into play later on. Just making sure that they are canvas item and keep. We're not worried about any other options at this point. So let's scroll down. This is where we are going to start getting our, sorry, press close. Um, let's get our project set up. So in the project, we're going to make three independent scenes, the player, the mob, and the HUD, uh, as well as the main scene. And this is what I'm talking about earlier. So it's a capital P, capital M, HUD is all capitals, and main is also got a capital. So make sure that when you are naming things that you are using the correct um, spelling and punctuation and capitalizations. Here is where we are bringing in the files that we got earlier. So if I just bring in that folder that I had, here it is. The easiest way is if you've got a folder like this, and I'm just going to select both of them together, I can literally drag them into my res uh, resources over here. So we just drag over res, it's going to copy those files in and their folders, etc. Uh, I, I know on Windows you can't copy directly from a zip file, so you have to extract them first and then bring them across. I think it might be the same on Mac. So once you've got it extracted, drag them in. And then, of course, technically you could delete these temporary files because they're now part of this folder. And just to sort of also show you that, if I do jump into that folder in my normal Windows, so Godot, uh, Projects, and the 2024, there you go. You can actually see that they've been copied into the real folder there. So you can manage your files here in resources. And in most cases, you can also manage them here uh, in the project files, but it's easier in my opinion to manage them in resources. So let's get rid of this. We don't need it anymore. And technically we have finished that section. Let's go to next. Now we're going to start by creating our player scene. So it says the first scene you'll define is called player. And let's have a look at how we're going to do. So again, remember, you should read this in detail. I'm skimming through the core parts to try and save a bit of time in the video. So we're going to start with an area 2D and we're going to then change that node's name to player. So you can see here it's saying choose other node. In our search area, we're going to search for area 2D. Make sure it is a 2D version, not a 3D if there is an option. So area 2D, I've added it in. Okay, and we're going to rename that by simply clicking on it. And you can either right click or you can do a slow double click like you do in most uh, file areas. And you can rename this to be player. So again, the capital P and make sure you spell it correctly. So it's now renamed to be player. Um, we also want to make sure that we don't accidentally move or resize any children. So they're asking you to click on this little icon. So with my player node selected, I come to my toolbar above the workspace and you'll see there is that icon so i'm going to click on that um, to make sure that it is locked and you can see it shows up now here as well and this will make a little bit more sense as things go on i'm really pleased to see they already expect you to save so let's practice that so again you can go scene and you can save scene you can save all scenes if you've been working on multiple things or you can also use 
your shortcuts, which for me is Control S because I'm on Windows, uh, or if you're on Mac, Command S. So let's get in a good habit of saving. Just before we do that, notice there's an asterisk that indicates that this scene has not been saved recently. And I've also not named it yet. So when I do save this the first time, it's going to ask to name it. Um, now, one thing it doesn't talk about in here is organizing your files. I strongly encourage you to create folders for scenes and so forth. So we've got an art folder, a font folder. I'm going to just make a new folder here and I'm going to call it scenes. It's just a habit I've certainly got into over the years. Um, and I also like to make sure I name my um, scenes with the name of the default player. Oh, sorry, the default node. So it is picking up that it's player, but notice it's got a lowercase p. I am going to change that to match my default node. So it's in the scenes folder I just made, and I'm saving as player.tscn, which stands for scene. So there we go. We've done all of that. This blue box is just talking about the two main different programming languages. We will stick with GD Script. That's the built-in language. We're not using C Sharp, so you can ignore that. Although when we see code, we need to make sure we are using the GD Script. But I'll point that out again in a moment. Right, it then says that we're going to click on Play and add some new nodes. Okay, we're going to start by adding an animated sprite. Um, and that's going to be quite easy. So we take our player. There's a few ways. Control A or Command A will add... An, uh, a node or you can get used to pressing the plus button here as well animated sprite let's type it in uh, sprite to make sure it is the 2d version again and add that in so you can see this is a child of player it's not its own node at the top it is a child of the player so now that we've got our animated sprite, we need to come across to the process, sorry, the um, inspector and look at its properties. We're going to choose the animation and the sprite frame. We're going to choose new sprite frames. When we choose new sprite frames, as it's talking about here, um, it's going to create, and sorry, and then we double click on it. It's going to bring up our animation space down the bottom. Now we can get to that from the options down here, but until we actually had a sprite we wouldn't have this sprite frames option from there we're going to create our first um, set of animations using the art resources already sent to us so on the left we have a default we're going to rename that to be walk okay so let's call that walk now very importantly it is with a lowercase w so very important that we do that properly oops sorry i went to the wrong spot so let's click back on sprite now in our walk we need to add some uh, characters in so we're going to be going to the art folder and we're finding the player and there's two pictures that we're using so there's walk one and walk two and if we drag both of those into this area you'll see now that we have these two sprites that make up our animation and you can also now see them up the top in our um, game design area so a few things need to change uh, firstly, it's a bit large, so we're going to scale them down. So we're going to click on the animated sprite. We are going to click on uh, the scale property, and we're going to change it to 0.5 and 0.5. So basically, um, that means that we are going to essentially half the size. So we'll go to transform, scale, 0.5 and 0.5. And you can see nothing changed in the bottom, but certainly up the top, you can see that, that player is half the size it was before. Okay, so that's where you can see that happening in the instructions. We're also going to add a collision shape. Now, collision shape is different to the sprite. Uh, the sprite is visually what we see, but nothing can interact with it. A collision shape defines an area that one item or one uh, scene or node or etc. can interact with. So we can understand where things touch or collide, where they're intersecting each other and all those sort of things. So we're going to add that also as a child of player. So it's make sure it's clicked on player, not animation. If you do it now, you'd be a child of animated sprite. We want to be a child of player. So we're going to click on the player and add this in. So we're looking for a collision shape 2D, not a polygon, just a shape. We're using a basic shape for this. And we then come across to the shape over here in its, um, in its properties. We choose that it's going to be a new shape and we're going to just go with a new capsule. Okay. Cause a capsule, as you can see in this picture here, this blue is our capsule. It pretty much fits the, the shape. If I just zoom in a little bit, I'm just using my scroll wheel here. Otherwise you can use the zoom tools up the top. 
Again, I might not have mentioned this, but having an actual mouse can make a lot of things easier, especially zooming and panning. But I can grab these little handles and I can make it fit my shape a little bit better. Okay, so there you go. It's essentially touching the main areas of my shape. So that's what that part's asked us to do there. So let's scroll down and it's just finalizing that, yep, our scene over here, player, animated sprite, inclusion shape, match what we've done so far. So again, that's the second section done. Let's move on. Third section, we're going to finally get some code into our player. Okay, so we're adding in some movement animation. So some movement, some animation, and set it to detect collisions. So let's add some functionality. So again, with our player chosen, we're going to add our first script. And our script is where code actually is. So with player selected, we're going to choose this button here, which is just up to the right, to add a script. Now, again, we can leave all these defaulted. So you can see that here. The one thing I will do that is different again to the video is encourage you to put your scripts in its own folder. So I'm in fact going to choose to select an area. I'm going to go back up a path because I want to be here. And like before, I'm going to make a new folder called scripts. Okay, and I'm going to put my script in there. Again, it's going to default with the name of your node. And because we use a capital P before, it's going to be like that. And I can just say, okay to that and we can just say create on that because we're happy so this is going to be our first bit of script so this is what we call gd script and if you remember earlier i said there were two different types and we'd only be looking at gd and by default code blocks like this in the instructions should say gd script but if you happen to be in the c sharp like that just make sure that you are instead on gd script if you're super keen and you've got a lot of program programming experience before in c sharp I'm okay with discussing with you, try and see sharp instead, um, but GDScript is an easier language to understand early on. So what we're going to do is literally delete all of this except for the extends area 2D. Okay. And what you can do in most cases is copy and paste the code from the example on the web page, basically into the code area. So if I highlight all of this, now if I did highlight the extends, of course I'd have to delete that. So in fact, let's do that. Let's just highlight everything in there, copy it, and for now, paste it over the top. Okay, so you can see we've got the code now from over here. Now this is where it gets really important that you read carefully. Because if you just copy and paste the code in, you're not going to understand anything about it. And when you have to make some adjustments, or certainly when you start thinking about developing your game, you're not going to understand any of this. A couple of things that might be useful to note, and again, if I had more screen size, I would show you a bit differently, but keywords, right, often come up in orange as well as red. So this is a system command in orange, uh, a keyword in red, and variables and stuff usually come up in gray, so normal text or normal code, I should say, and values often come up in a greeny color. Uh, this will often help you to see certain things that might be wrong. So if you're expecting something to be a certain color and it's not, might indicate you've got a typo somewhere. We also can use a hash symbol at the end or start of a line. And anything after that hash is considered a comment. And you'll often see it in the instructions and also in game tutorials, uh, a lot of use of comments. And I highly encourage you to comment as much as you might need to. So feel free to add extra comments as you go to help you remember what you're learning. So if you read something here, you try something and you go, oh yeah, I get that, but not really the way they said it, feel free to add your own comments in. So you might want to put a comment up here, for example, um, this is in the third screen of the tutorial. Anything you like really, and of course my spelling is terrible there, sorry about that. Um, but you might want to give yourself your own notes that help you remember anything at all that is relevant to your understanding of how this code works. But what these two are definitely saying is that the first line is setting up a variable about how fast the player will move in pixels per second, so 400 pixels a second. And the second one is going to be a variable that we use to keep track of the size of the screen. And that's a value that we set earlier on. Okay, so let's keep going. We're not using C sharp, so we don't have to worry about this part. Um, so we're basically, um, ready to keep going. Now here it does say that it should contain a ready in the process. Now I actually did delete them. My apologies for that, but that's okay. We are bringing them back anyway, as we copy and paste. So let's, uh, 
take this code and copy it underneath. And so we've now got a new function called ready. Now the ready function is a very important function. It uses a hyphen at the start, which indicates it's a built-in function. And this uh, function will be run as soon as your object or your scene is ready in the game. So as soon as it's loaded into memory, essentially, this ready function happens really before pretty much everything else. And what's happening here is we are getting the size of our viewport. So that value we set before 720 and 480 or whatever it was. And we're storing it into this variable so that we can use it later on. And that's again explained in this section here. So you should read through it a little bit more carefully. The next thing it's asking us to do is to set up our controllers. So we're going to again go to the project settings up the top. So project, project settings in our bar along the top we are going to input map and we need to in or create basically um, some values that represent the different movements that we will have so let's um, start by adding new one in so I'm going to add an action okay it's going to be called move right m-o-v-e now they're using an underscore between two words it's a very common way of um, showing a space in any sort of variable name etc because you should not actually use spaces and in most programming languages it won't even accept them because it's two words how does it know that they go together all right so we're going to say add and you can see just like in the picture here it has been added down the bottom from there we're going to click the little plus next to that move right to choose a input method so we're going to choose um, a keyboard key and I think they want us to use the right key. Yep, so right key. So we can scroll through and find that down here. Or an easier way is we can literally press the key. So if we cancel that, press plus, we can literally, it says listening there, we can just press the right key on our keyboard. Okay, and we say okay to that. So now we have a value called move right that is going to be activated when the right physical keyboard key is pressed. Now, this is a really powerful way of doing controls because we don't have to create different um, control mechanisms for other controllers. So, for example, if you happen to have a game controller that works with the, the system that you're using, so I will bring in some game controllers into these classes, you can add that in as well. So I could add another plus. And I could go, for example, to uh, joypads. And I'm just going to pick something random for a second. So let's say that was going to also represent right. I can press OK. So now both of these things can activate in the game and they can tell the game to move right. We can use the same um, mechanism to understand what move right is for different controllers. For now, we're only doing the keyboard, so let's remove this one. And we're going to now go through and do the other ones. So we need to have, here we go, we've got move right, now we need a move left, a move up and a move down. So the process is the same, add a new one. Let's do move left. We'll add it in. I'm going to type them all in and then I'm going to assign the keys to them in a second. So we're going to have move up and we're going to have move down. Let's assign keys. So move left, we're going to click on, and it's going to be the left arrow. Moving up, click on it. Let's use the up arrow. And finally, moving down, click on it. And we're going to use the down arrow. Okay, so we've now assigned physical keyboard keys to each of these movement variables. And it should look basically like that there. So we can scroll down. Um, as it says here, this little note is what I just said before, that you can map multiple keys to the same input. So now we're going to add some new code in here. So let's copy this code in. And we're going to copy that. Sorry, we can close this. Copy that underneath this code here. So making sure it lines up. And this is another built-in function called process. Uh, it has a special value called delta, which we'll talk about as things go on. But delta is important for helping to keep things timed and you know, flowing smoothly. But it'll be something that we talk more about later on. A few things are happening in this one. And again, you can read through this in detail um, up to this point here. But I'll just sort of skim over it. Firstly, we are getting a velocity variable made and setting it to a vector of zero. Now, vector twos are basically a built-in variable type that has two values, which we usually refer to as x and y. doesn't have to mean an x and y coordinate. It can just be two values. But it's a, a very important and commonly used um uh, variable type vector two. You can also have a vector three with three variables, x, y, and z, 
um, but we're using a vector 2 here because we want velocity has both a speed and a direction. This command here, input, is now checking for any inputs into the system. We're asking if an action has been pressed. So this blue is a function. Okay, it's a function that the player object, which is an area 2D, understands. And then we're using the name of that key that we set up. So it's basically asking, is the move right key being pressed? All right, and if it is being pressed, we will do the command here in this if statement. And that is to set the velocity, so this variable up here, the x value. So remember I said a vector 2, we refer to as x and y. It's going to set the first value of vector 2 basically to be plus 1 more. So it's increasing our x value by 1. And we basically have a similar input if statement for each of the movements. So if it's left, we decrease our x value by 1. So x is obviously suggesting our horizontal movement. And we're going to use the y value for our vertical movement. So if the down is being pressed, it adds one. If the up is being pressed, it had, uh, reduces by one. Now that might seem a little bit counter, uh, because if you think about the, the maths uh, grid, you have your, your grid and X gets bigger from towards the right and Y gets bigger as you go up. But in game development, we generally see that the top left-hand corner is zero, zero of X. So still X gets bigger as we go across the screen, but Y gets smaller as we go down the screen okay so um sorry what, what i'm saying sorry why gets bigger my apologies why gets bigger so it starts at zero zero here and why gets bigger as we go down and if you were to go up from there that's when it gets negative so that's why this might seem like it's back to front but actually moving down increases our y value and moving up decreases we then have a look at that length of velocity how big is that number um, we normalize it. Normalizing it, it's talked about in here. It basically just brings it back to a single value. And this is now going to play an animated sprite. Okay. Um, hopefully this makes some sense. Again, if you read through this carefully, uh, so this is the part about normalization, then uh, it will hopefully make more sense. And again, add some more comments if you need to. Okay. Um, then we come down a bit further we're going to change position of our player. So this one, this bit of code is going to be added to the function process. So again, make sure you read carefully. It says add this to the bottom of the process function. So we're going to take this little bit of code, copy it out and add it underneath. So not as part of an if, please make sure you don't do that. Uh, go down and add it below the function. So I'm just going to have to backspace that one. And this one's complaining. Why are they complaining at me? I think I know why they're complaining because it doesn't like the way I've added it. So maybe if I use the copy built in uh, and paste it that way. Let's see. It's liking that better. I still had to backspace this one. Um, no, this one is still not liking it. This is a, oh, sorry, I have to go back a bit further. Sorry. So position. Now this should be lined up at the start of all this. So let's bring that in one and two. And see, now it's happy. So those errors I was getting down the bottom were simply about things not being lined up properly. Um, GD script is a bit like Python and some other languages where the spacing, tabbing has importance because all my other things have been tabbed. You can see that's what these little arrows mean. Tab one in, tabbed two in. It needs to be the same down here. So copying and pasting, it wasn't doing it. Might need to bring them back to start, then tab them in properly. But anyway, this is then saying, hey, the position, okay, of this um, area 2D, so the player, is going to be plus or and equal to, so increased by the velocity times delta. And again, it's going to talk a little bit about delta right here, so you can have a read of that. But as I said before, delta is important for keeping things synchronized, especially across um, different powered machines. So you sometimes don't get things that seem to run really quickly, and other times it's a bit slow. So again, have a read of what delta means. And if you're not sure, we can talk about it more in class. Right. Um, then we also clamp the position. Um, so basically, this is trying to make sure it doesn't go off the screen. So it's basically saying, hey, take the position, clamp it between zero, Okay, so zero edge of the screen and the screen size. So basically don't let the value of position be different to the screen size that we got earlier on. Now, if we've done everything right, we actually should have a little bit of something that plays. So let's um, save as it suggests there. So I'm going to use my uh, 
control S to save. It's not asking me for a name because I've already saved it previously. And I'm going to now try um, and play this scene. Now don't get this confused with playing the whole game. So I'm not going to use the play button up here. I'm going to move across to, so I think it's this one, uh, which is play scene. So if I click on that, it tries just opening this single scene. And there is my player. It's up in the top corner at the moment, which is a bit of a problem, but I can use my keyboard to essentially move them around. Now my up and down are working. My right is working, but my left doesn't seem to be working. I'm tapping away at left, it's not working. So where have I made my mistake? And I could pretend that this is a legitimate mistake made to teach you something, but it wasn't. It's a real mistake. So my left should be here. This all looks correct. And I'm pretty confident this is correct because the code was copied. So my guess is that when I've set up my um, inputs, I've made a typo with this. So let's go back to project, project settings, input map, and have a look at left. And yes, I've made a typo. So it's as easy as fixing that to be move left, not move left, and close that off. And if I now try to run my scene again, it will probably ask me to save if I've made any changes, but I don't think I have. Just having a little trouble clicking on it because of the... Oh no, sorry, I don't think I closed it. Did I close it before? Let's find out. So now you can see the game is playing and I have my left movement. So, so far that is all working quite well. And you can see as my player is moving, those legs are animating. It's basically cycling between those two pictures, one with the legs together, one of the legs taking a step. So we have got a little bit more to do in this section. So let's close that off. We're now going to need to change or choose the correct animation for each of the different movements. Okay, now I think, scrolling through, no, did we miss that in the video? I think I might have skipped past that. Let me go back, sorry about this. I'm just gonna jump back and see when we started this, were we supposed to make each of the other animations? So we had the default, which we turned into walk. Yes, we were. So we're supposed to create an up animation as well. So, sorry about that. Let's go and quickly do that now. So we're going to go to our animated sprite 2D, uh, click over here on the sprites if we weren't already, so we can open this up, and we need to add another sprite. So let's add an animation, okay, and again, unfortunately, it has closed that on me, so let's try it again. There it is, new animation. We need to change this to be up, and we needed to bring in those two for the up. So you can see it's changed the eye, it's facing upwards, and we've also got the legs changed a little bit. So that's an animation for going up. So sorry about that. I missed that again because I was rushing through it. As I said to you at the beginning, if you read it carefully, uh, you would not have missed that part. So let's now get back to where we were, which is here where we're choosing the animation. Let's come back into the player and the script. If you need to, you can click on the script here to reopen it. You might also see a tab up the top already open for you and I'll just again point out the asterisk is back which indicates that this has been modified in some way and it hasn't been saved yet so that's going to be important later. Now it says that underneath in the um, process so again it's going to be underneath what we've done so far we're going to add this code in so I'm just going to copy it I'm going to put it at the bottom and I'll probably get some errors because as we just talked about before things have to be lined up properly so the if is correctly lined up. These things that are underneath, look at over here, need to be tabbed in one from the if so that it's correctly done. So let's do that. This else needs to line up with that if, and therefore these things also need to be tabbed in again. So this block of code here now again matches the block of code here. What this is doing is saying, hey, if the velocity of uh, value x, so the x part of velocity, the, the first part of our horizontal, does not equal zero, i.e. it is moving zero. We want to make sure the animation that's being played is the walk animation. And we also want to flip the vertical. So we want to flip the, the picture, the sprite vertically, but we want to say false. We do not want to flip it. Because by default, if I come back to my animated sprite and the walk, by default, it's facing to the right. 
And that's also a very common thing in game development is our sprite assets should be facing towards the right when we create them because most uh, game development environments assume that right is sort of zero if you like it's the, the the default direction so by creating sprites to face the right initially uh, it allows us to do what we're doing right now which is to flip so let's go back to the code which is to flip the vertical or horizontal depending on on what direction is moving however if um the anime sprites horizontal flip so we're not flipping vertically up and down we're flipping horizontally and we're using the value of x okay so flip horizontal is going to be equal to the value dot x great or oh sorry less than zero so what that's basically saying hey if x is less than zero that's going to evaluate to true so if it is flip h is going to be equal to true which means our character will get flipped or at least the graphic will get flipped so it looks like it's facing to the left because a velocity of x being zero or neg or less than zero sorry means it's facing and walking to the left if it's not less than zero so even if it is zero we're going to face it to the right so that gives us a, a, a value of false and therefore our h or horizontal flip is false so it goes back to the default view of our sprite which by default as i said was facing to the right we have a similar thing happening here with the up and down so again look at the y velocity component if it's equal to zero there's no up and down movement so we don't need to do anything however if there is we do a similar thing we make sure the up animation is set to play and we also use the value of y in a similar way to determine whether we're flipping the picture vertically and the it's all all that's explained here as well so please again read through that okay let's um really quickly try that again so let's play our animation or our scene and now what we should see is as we move so i'm pushing down you can see my character is facing down push up it changes up and the appropriate animation is also chosen when i go right you can see the right animation and the left with the flip okay so the animation there's still only one animation for up down there's still only one animation for left right but because we're flipping that vertical or horizontal we effectively get the equivalent of two animations okay so we've got better movement of our character as they move around the screen now if you do a diagonal it gets a little confused of course okay because it doesn't fully understand up and down in a diagonal sense uh, but it's enough for this game if you look at this diagonal it still seems okay does it it's still facing the direction it should um, it's not it's not um, really a bad animation so I think it's okay all right um, We've got one more bit that we're going to do here so when we're sure the movement is working correctly add this line to the ready so the player we're hidden when the game starts so now tested it all out we're happy this works so let's close it and to our ready so we're going to copy this bit of code and then come back to our ready underneath the screen size we're going to put this hide in and effective that will hide our whole player so if we were to play this at the moment now it looks like there's nothing there because our player has been hidden this is important for the next part of the game so please make sure you include it okay let's continue on with this section and that is to prepare for collisions um, collisions in the case of this game or this particular play is going to be when a player hits a bad guy essentially uh, but it could be any type of collision so it could be a player collect, uh, hitting an object they want to pick up so it's still a collision so that you can then react to it in a different way so we're going to go to our player after the extends area 2d we're going to add this little bit of um, code okay don't worry about what the c-sharp part remember that's something different so we're going to go to our player to its code up the top just below where it says extends area 2d we're going to add this signal now signals is the way or one of the ways um, that different scenes different parts of the game communicate with each other in Godot we send out a signal or we respond to a signal so what we are doing here is and again if you read through it carefully you'll see it is we're setting up a custom hit signal called hit that the player can send out so hey I've hit something right and then we will um, respond to that at different times okay and it says here if we go from our inspector move one tab across the node um obviously once we've saved it as well sorry that's very important 
Uh, we should see a signal. I just had to refresh by moving off it coming back and there is our signal hit. So this is something that our player can say, hey, I've hit something. Um, what do you want to do basically? So if we scroll down, okay, we're going to do a little bit more reading on this and we're then going to add a new function. So again, here is the full function here and we're going to copy that to the bottom underneath function process. Because it's a new function, make sure we go all the way back to the start level so you can see there's no tabbing at the moment. I'm going to paste it in there. You still may get some errors depending on how well it pasted. So our function lines up at the top level, one tab in for each of our commands, unless you've got a sub command and if, etc., which might be tabbed in again. And again, you can read through this in detail, but essentially what's happening here is we are hiding the body. So if we do collide with something else, we're going to hide it. We're going to send that or emit that hit signal out. And we're also going to turn our collision shapes to disable temporarily so we don't keep colliding because until we've actioned it, we don't want to keep sending out a hit, 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 hit signals. We hit once, we send out a signal and we basically stop the, the colliding. Okay, so that's all what's talked about in this section here. Finally, uh, we're going to add a function to put our character in the start position. So again, let's copy this bit of code. Let's go to the bottom underneath that uh, on, body, on body entered and put that in. And again, this is going to be our start. Okay, so when the um, game starts, we're going to tell the, the player to go to its start position. Okay, we're going to show it and we're also going to set its collision shape to disabled. Um, so not to disabled, sorry, false. So they're going to be enabled so we can start getting hit by things. This won't do anything yet because we're not calling it. It's basically getting set up ready for the start of game code. Okay, and that's going to finish off this section. Um, you may hear a bell in the background. I'm recording this video at school uh, and that's a perfect time to break anyway. This video is already going on 45 minutes. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gets you through these first few sections. So at this stage, you should have set up your game environment, uh, screen sizes, etc. You should have started your play with some animation and movement in each of the four directions, um, which is all working. And then you started setting up some functions ready for future parts of the game, specifically the on body entered and the start position for your player. So let's call it a, a, a day there. Press save, of course, if you haven't been doing that re, uh, regularly. So control S for me, command S on a Mac, um, and you'll be right to go. Thank you for this video so far. And if you need help, of course, if you're in my classes, please reach out. Otherwise, um, look out for the next video to continue on.